welcome back to Part B of Designing Newsletters in Lesson 109. In this part, I am going to follow the steps exactly even from opening the document in order to show you how we are picking up with where we left off before. And there's also a resource file here. You're going to need to download it for this exercise. So let's take a minute to look at the corrections in the instructions. You're going to have to change some things on page 451. The text wrapping in the instructions should be in line with text rather than top and bottom. And you should, in step 9, set the clip art height to 2 inches. The first thing we should do is download the resource file. So I am going to show you how this works. Just click the button and depending on your browser, you may be given an opportunity to save the file, not just open it. So for me, I'm going to need to save this file in a safe location. So I'm going to my folder for GDP or Offad 119. Be sure and notice the name. Click Save. Now we click Start Work and the file that opens should be the document that you created in Part A. Now we're going to continue this newsletter. We move our insertion point to the end of the document. That is, if you have Show Hide On right here at the paragraph mark where you see my insertion point blinking. I'm going to press Enter one time and Insert File 109. Remember how we do this? We're going to insert an object, text from a file, move to the location where we saved this file. Here is mine and I click Insert. Okay, you see that here? It's not really bold. It's just because my text is at 120 percent that it may look that way in the video. Once I have the text inserted, move back up to the beginning and turn on automatic hyphenation. That is on the page layout screen, the page setup group under hyphenation, click automatic. Carefully place your insertion point in front of the first character of the text inserted and select all the newly inserted text from the first character to include the one blank line below the last line of text. I hold down shift and then click after that paragraph mark. So it is all selected. Then I move to columns and choose three. Okay, it is temporarily back on one page. While it is still all selected, move to the Home tab and click Justified Alignment. Okay, we're going to have to recheck this each time we continue on and insert more text. Okay, now we're going to select the side headings and change the font to Calibri 20 Point Bold. We start with Plan Ahead, 20 Point Bold, and now I'm going to show you a trick you can use you don't have to, but you may. Double click Format Painter. That's so that you can use it more than once. Apply it to make a diagram. Be sure that the paint brush is showing when you're trying to use it. Plan your escape and avoid smoke. Then click it once more to turn it off. Now we're going to insert clip art in the space below the first two side headings. This is going to be related to the paragraph content, so Scan it through to be sure what you're looking at. We're planning how to get out of a house in a fire emergency. So move to the Insert tab, Clip Art, and we're going to do a search for... You can choose any kind of clip art you want, whether you focus on photographs or if you choose to focus on drawings. Try to be consistent throughout the newsletter with your choice. I like the idea of binoculars here, so I'm going to choose this picture. We are instructed to set our clip art height to 2 inches and let the width adjust proportionally. But if you do that, in this clip art, for example, it seems to have been inserted at such a perfect size, that is going to make it wider than the column. So in order to follow directions exactly, we're going to do that, but then we're going to have to crop the picture for its width. So here we go. I'm going to set it for two inches tall. Notice how it's too wide extending into the margin or the space between the columns. You see how some of it's cut off. We're going to click crop 
and with the crop handles I'm going to move it like this so that it's the width of the column. We're not really losing any essential element from the picture there. And then click the crop button again to actually complete that crop maneuver. Okay, that should work. Now I'm going to apply a style. The style should be consistent with the other clip art that you're going to insert. So choose what you like. I'm going to use a soft edge rectangle and then I'll need to be consistent and apply that to the others that I insert. I am going to select this space between the heading and the paragraph and this is referring to a drawing of a floor plan. There may have even been some four floor plans in this search that we did. This picture actually looks very relevant so I'm going to choose this one. Its height is so very nearly two inches that it doesn't take much to finish that off. We can close our clip art pane and apply that same soft rectangle edge to that clip art selection. Now you can see that you, we have already bumped onto page two and your footer should read page two. And we need to compare the placement of the columnar text to see if it's similar to what's shown in the illustration. We were asked to make a correction and insert a column break in front of the heading Plan Your Escape. But we need to recognize the intention here. The intention is that Plan Your Escape be at the top of column three of page one. If it is already there as mine is, then we just need to delete this blank line before the heading and we don't have quite the same number of lines on the page as they want. They want three below avoid smoke, but I don't see any good way of doing that. Have to change something in column three to get that extra line there and it's just not going to work. So two is fine. If it were one, I would be worried, but two is fine. And so I'm going to leave that there and compare our work. The object is to be sure that plan your escape appears at the top of column C. If this is how your document looks, we're ready to save it and move on to the next step. So let's see how GDP scores this work that I've done so far. I'm going to save it and it's important to notice that the name of the document is 10884S. Now I have a one because I have edited my document, but yours will end in just S. That is a saved version of 10884 that was opened for 109. So this is one of those situations where we need to be careful about the file names, but just, just know that you're going to submit it in the right place. I'm going to come here to Browse and upload my file. Again, I need to use the one with the number one added, but yours should be the first time. It should just be 84S. When the clock stops spinning, we'll click Submit Work and have it scored. Okay, it finds four errors. These are all line spacing issues that it does not appreciate, but these are all excusable errors, what I would consider as excusable if they turn up in your work. Be sure to edit any typos that are found, but this kind of error can be ignored. Okay, we're ready to move on, so I will see you there.